Caesar crosses the Rubicon. Bum, bum. Hitler invades Russia. Bum, bum. And the Romans share a stick to clean their shit. Not on my bum, bum. Oh, yes. On your bum, bum. <sighs> Can I just... Can I just use a rock instead? History really is a stranger than fiction. From fantastic fashion trends to wacky wonder weapons, history allows us to look back on our ancestors, those whose shoulders we stand upon, and just laugh at them. Cuz, bro, what is that? This is my genocide hat. And that's why history is the best. It's the ultimate ego boost. I might be unemployed, unattractive, and unlovable, but at least I didn't die on the toilet. Puff. Aesthetic. And today, I want to talk about a few strange things from history so that we can better appreciate our modern luxuries like refrigeration, plumbing, plumbing and today's sponsor, Raid Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see Napoleon do that. But to understand history, we must go back in history uh, to simpler times, more barbaric times. But I've got a problem. I'm stuck here in modern day. Woof. So to remedy this first world problem, I've constructed the first ever time machine. The Time Wizard 22. This baby can go anywhere and anytime. You wanna go to Egypt? Boom. Itching for China? Bam. Discover the new world? Your funeral. But me? I'm a sophisticated man, cultured, if you will, and so today I've got one destination in mind the peak of civilization. The kings of the Mediterranean, the Americans of the ancient world. Rome. Five hundred? No, that's too barbaric. Thirty B.C.E. Hit it! Black and white? That's not right. No. Tempting, but no. Too far. Oh, this looks right. Oh, Romans. What? What year is it? Oh, that's right. They don't speak English. Um. Spaghetti? Yeah, I deserve that. Ah, Rome. The peak of ancient civilization. You had aqueducts, entertainment, and slavery. All the components of any golden age. And what a golden age it was. Spreading Roman ideals from Great Britain all the way to the Middle East. One barbarian at a time. I'm civilized. But like any society, Rome had positives and negatives, winners and losers. And boy, did it suck uh, to be a loser. Oh my god! Is that poop? Sorry. Take Genitalius here. Like many in Rome, he's poor, unemployed, and lives on the top of an insula, a Roman apartment complex, a cramped, uncomfortable, and unreliable room. Think New York City studio apartment, but with smaller rats and bigger plagues. But unlike modern cities, the wealthiest lived at the base and the poorest at the peak. Because although Roman architecture was the peak of ancient engineering, they're still basically barbarians. Oh, not again! Man, things couldn't get any.
way worse. And I spoke too soon. These insula were prone to fires and just falling over, which in Rome's tightly constructed city was bad news. It was often said one could shake their neighbor's hand through the window, and where hands can meet, fire will leap. Uh, but there is some good news. Uh, firemen did exist in ancient Rome, uh, but sadly, hose technology did not, and so firefighting looked essentially like this. I got it! Oh! I didn't get it. So, instead of fighting the fire, firemen would just demolish the entire neighborhood to starve out the flames. It's like isolating a contagion or attacking cancer. You kill some healthy cells to prevent the spread of unhealthy ones. So your house might not technically be on fire, but it's just become a fire hazard by sheer proximity. <gasps> what? Who goes there? Fire department. We got uh, code seven about eight miles from here. We're gonna have to tear this whole place down. Can you just put it out? Put it out. We'll try that after. And these fires were so common that insurance even existed. Uh, pay a small fee so that when disaster inevitably strikes, the insurance won't cover it. So modern. But with insurance comes insurance fraud. Let your own house on fire and blame it on the Christians. A classic. And this is real. An actual document exists from ancient Rome detailing a man being accused of burning his own a building down for a large payout. <laughs> that sly devil. To which the insurance agent promptly said, So it says here your house was burned by Christians? Yeah, they just came out of the crypts and burned everything. They left that note there too if you want to check that out. Thought it was kind of weird, but Christians, you know? Yes. Christians. Well, that story checks out with me, but sadly, your insurance only covers fire started by Jews, so denied. So now Genitalius is broke, homeless, and severely burned. But hey, at least he's awake now and might as well earn some bread to buy some bread. Just kidding, because he doesn't have a job. See, ancient Rome, like most ancient civilizations, utilized slaves. Free labor that you could force to do anything. The original intern. Build that sewer. Wash my back. Get me some coffee. What's a coffee? Is that a new type of slave? Fair enough, but don't fret quite yet. Uh, plenty of jobs still exist for free men. A baker, blacksmith, pea collector, banker. What's that? Banker? Did you say... Did you say pea collector? Oh, you've never heard or worked as a pea collector? It's a real job in ancient Rome. The pea collector would go around and... Well, collect pee. And now you're probably wondering, why would a man collect pee? A clean alternative to water? Very true, but not quite right. Uh, see, Romans used pee to help clean and disinfect clothes, but most importantly, to keep them nice and white. Uh, the process is actually quite simple. Get some pee, grab some clothes, and dump them all into a giant bucket. And here comes the best part. Remove your sandals and just start mashing, baby. Ah! Well, at least I'm clean. Damn it, Brian. Ruining a perfectly good batch of pee. Again. P was held in such high esteem that at one point there was even a P tax. Emperor Vespasian taxed the P collected from public toilets. 
Apparently, the ammonia found in pee was considered a precious resource, and so naturally, the government wanted to control it. I imagine a world where people hide their pee under the floorboards while neighbor snitches on neighbor, and tax collectors go from door to door, harassing the local plebeians for their hot, steamy seed water, probably saying, Mr. Phalangius? Yes? I am the royal pea collector, and you owe 2.2 gallons of pea. Now you can pay up now, or you can become a slave. Your choice. Pea tax? I'm from Gaul, and nobody said anything about a pea tax. Ignorance is not innocence, barbarian. Now whip out your obelisk, or put on the chains. All right, all right, but could you like turn around? I get stage fright. Deal, but no barbarian business. Is this, is this enough pee? Not even close. But if pee collecting isn't for you, many job alternatives exist. You got agriculture, pottery, or my personal favorite, orgy planning, which was a real job. Essentially an event planner, but for orgies. You had to figure out the food, manage the music, and enlist high status individuals to increase the status of the orgy. Hail, Caesar. Would you like to attend my orgy this weekend? What did you say? I'm the face of Rome, and the Republic for which all society rests. Of course I want to come to your orgy. But orgy planning was a job for the wealthy, yet one option that did exist for the poor to rise the ranks of society, uh, simply rise the ranks of the military, enlist in the army, kill a few barbarians, collect some glory, bang, boom, you retire with some plunder, and your government granted piece of land, you know, if you make it to retirement. All right. Welcome to the Ninth Legion. Here's your sword, here's your shield. Keep the shield. I won't be needed. <laughs> Next. You know what? Let's just be unemployed. A valid option in ancient Rome, as the government did hand out a monthly stipend of wheat to each and every citizen to deal with the poverty problem, which just created another problem. How are you gonna turn that into this? An oven? Don't have one. A baker? Too expensive. Just leaving it in the hot sun? Stolen. So essentially, you've got two options. Option one, Take that wheat, mash it down, and convert it into this, a disgusting oatmeal-like paste that will sit in your stomach for two months, or option two, blackmail the baker. Oops. Sir, you, you dropped this. What do you want from me? Bake it. So. You're unemployed, living off gruel, and haven't had a bowel movement in two months. Uh-oh. Guess it's time to head on down to Rome's greatest architectural achievement, uh, public bathrooms, where men of all status and standing would come together to sit together under one roof and take a poop. No stalls, no dividers, but lots of eye contact. Just you and your fellow citizens making fertilizer and paying the pea tax. Democracy at its finest. Senator Cicero, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? I'm here every Tuesday for my bi-weekly bowel movements. Best seats in town. And ooh wee, don't get me started on the poop sponges. They clean a hole like an Egyptian sarcophagus. Oh, the sponges are for cleaning. 
I thought they were a handle. Roman public bathrooms featured the unique alternative to toilet paper, the butt scrubber, a stick and sponge used to get in those deep and dark places. And since Rome is a republic, these sticks would be shared amongst the entire city to ensure fairness for all, including the spread of disease. Oh, look, Sisyphus. I think you mean syphilis. But if communal sponges gross you out, you could always utilize the ancient alternative, rocks. It'll leave a giant gaping hole in your giant gaping hole, but it's better than a bite, which was quite common in Roman latrines. Rats, spiders, and flies, oh my, lurked in the holes beneath, making every trip to the bathroom a nice little adventure. Adventure. Oh, I think a rat just bit me. Nah, that's just the syphilis. There is even an old legend of a giant octopus residing in the depths below. But that is a story for another day, for it is time for me to return home to the present and refuel my time travel juices. I hope you've enjoyed some of these wacky facts about history. And perhaps next time we'll visit Greece or Detroit. So let's set the dial, plug in the coordinates, and here we are.